What is going on guys, you find out here and welcome to another video. Well last time I showed you how to download any of the hack tools that you need for a Pokemon to create a Pokemon ROM hack of your own. I mostly focus on GBA because I as I told that time that GBA is far too easier and far more much diverse than any of the other console games. So today, well, as today, I'm going to cover one of the such tools that are very important if you want to learn how to roam hack. This tool is one of the, I think, one of the most important tool and one of the easiest to use tool out there. This tool just allows you to just requires that you have a basic understanding of what it does, and you might be able to create some of the things. Now, as I said that time, I'm just going to cover the basics as I'm not that adept as as adept in ROM hacking as well. But yeah, I will and also since you are this is for someone who is just starting to learn ROM hack, this video I'm going to just cover a pretty much basic things. But believe me, if you learn to use this tool, you might be this tool is pretty much very useful for the, um, the things that I'm going to cover are also very useful if you ask me the only thing that I might leave is scripting related because many of you and even I'm not that very, that very good of a scripter so I'm just going to cover some basic visual enhancements or how to do some things so the tool that I'm covering for this video is going to be advanced map editor which as name suggests is used to edit the map of the game now this tool is pretty, pretty much straightforward and I, I'm going to cover as much features and as much of its features as I can. I will be using the Emerald Roam that I downloaded during the tutorial and I also played through it so that I can save it so that I can save for the very first time in Little Root Town. So I am going to play with Little Root Town map only because right now I'm stuck in there. Also, as I told you, we will be needing a roam and I an emulator my bad and I and so I also have the, my visual boy advanced emulator going on since we have to run the room on something now I also and I also forgot to mention that you will be needing I also forgot to mention that you will be needing WinRAR in order to extract the room and also the tools as they all come in zip or you can also use any other equivalent archive application so without further ado let's begin so firstly we will be needing the tool well last time i saved it here so to run it just click on the tool as you always do and this is the window that it gives now in order to open our room in this you just need to go on you can directly click here and it will get, take you to the window where you want to choose the room that you want to open or you can go on file and load room or control o and then select the room now once you select the room you get a, a window like this and and a big window like this this is your preview window and this is the selector window in here you can see three options or three folders are archives if I say firstly from header from ININ map files now let's go through each of them what they are I'll go I'm going to go from down to above as from header is one of the most common that you will be using I always I have till now not not used anything else than from header so if we see here in map files we have test map and those maps that were no, that were intended to be in the game but never made it through like and these maps might sometimes give error so I prefer you just leave this alone this feature is not for you next is from I and I where it gives you some strange names well these names are not strange these are just the names of the Japanese version of those game or of the of the places or the initial version yes they this is the these are the names of the Japanese version which were renamed in English version that's why I prefer from header as it, it contains the English name now here you can see you get these numbers now just click on as you go from priority to priority you get various each number correspond to something for example if you click, if you click on zero I get a lot of maps 
Now these are the maps of the overworld or the main city. If I go in one, I will get the map of some in indoor indoor places. Number two, more indoor places. Number three, more, and so on. So just just click on. Since we are right now stuck in Little Root Town, so I'm just going to edit Little Root Town. So just click on Little Root Town, and here you can see that in your preview window, you get the view of the map of Little Root Town, and also a small window here that this is your tiles window. This gives you various blocks that you are going to need or use in in order to edit the map. Now, before going through these features that we have above here, let's let's quickly go through what these other features on the top does first as i show you this is for opening the room similarly this is for saving the data in your room this is for creating a new map you can create a map but but firstly let's go through editing a map then you will see how we can we create a map next is to insert a map you can create a map from a third party software and insert into the game next is this is the previous map since this is the first map of the game there is no previous map to this so, so this option doesn't work but if I went to Fortree City and then clicked on previous map it would take me to the map that I was editing before also this is show sprites if I click here it will take me to event window where it, it is going to show me all the sprites you see these are the sprites of the people in the overworld but right now we are going to go and be here now here we get sort by bank and map this sorts the map tiles map in here by various by by various by various methods. I prefer personally prefer sort by map name as it gives us a table where each of the maps are in conjunction with each other. Like for example, this is the map for Little Root Town. This is the map for our house. First, second, first floor. This is second floor. May's house, second floor, and Pokemon Lab. All the parts of the little root town in one. That's why I prefer, I prefer, and also for ease of editing, you should choose sort by map name. So let's just go to our overworld map. Now this feature is the block editor. Now you can see we have a limited variety of blocks here. The indoor blocks are not available for us to use. So we, what we can do is, we can replace any other block here, like this, to, with any other block. Like for example, if I want icicles, I'll just click here, here, and my this block will be replaced, if I click save, my this block will be replaced by icicles, but I don't need it as this block is very important. So that's how that is this blog editor next is the connector connections this helps you access the next map immediate next map to this one according to game for example if i click since we can't go anywhere only forward in from little root town there are no other connectors av av available only one that takes us to the next route we can just go back to little root town or we can go to next route here we have to twin leaf town and old hill town my bad and then from here we can go to the next route or back to twin leaf old hill wow man and then to back to little root so this is just to see the connectors or next is map editor or oh, world map editor but it, it has to do something with scripting so we are just going to leave it alone right now and lastly also this is also a scripting feature that find the free space in the row for you to edit now let's quickly now let's go through the main part that is these th these these five functions so first first is map 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 window what map in map window you can see the complete map without any sprites or events and also a block table that that gives you various blocks now from here if i want to change something like for example if i want to get grass here i'll just click here and hold the my left mouse button and just draw as much grass as I want we got a lot of grass here but since but these grass are just aesthetics and tiles I just replace all the normal tiles with the grass tiles now if now if you if you can see I by mistake just replace the corner of the roof of this house by a grass now this looks odd 
So now we can do two things from here. Firstly, we can either search in this in this block table for the matching house, or the thing that I personally suggest and you should do is just go and as both of these houses are identical, we can just go on this corner and right click. It will automatically select the tile that we need, and then just we can go we can go and left click here to replace the tile and it's back to normal now let's see what this border block means well in this border block means the the block that defines the border of the map if we change it to something else then that thing will this that block will def define the border of the map one as you can see till now one block contains four tiles so technically we can change if if we want we can change it into water area and then the water wherever water will come the border of the map will be defined now for if considering if i want to change and add a pond here okay so if i want to add a pond here what what can i do well firstly i need to search for the pond block or the tiles that correspond to a pond in, in here now here i have found a tile that that correspond to the my needs now what i can do is either i can go and select it with left click and then click here then go and Select the other one, click here, select the other one, click here, and so on to create a pond. But as you can see, this, this, this will take a lot of time, and if you want to create a big pond, this will be harrowing. So what else you can do? Well, there is another trick, this is known as big block trick. What you can do is just hold your control key on your keyboard and hold your left your right mouse button and select entire area that you want to create the size of let's say i want to create this much this size of pond i'll just select this area and this will create a big block now i just left click wherever i want in the map and the pond will be created i can merge two ponds if i also want i can just do one thing and just select this tile left click on this tile and just click here and here to connect these pawns also here here and then click oops my bad my bad what i'm gonna hell am i doing just click here and to get a bigger pawn this is this is another very nice feature of of advanced map editor with this we can change the map a bit or a lot if if we want this is a bit about the map section now we go to movement permission well now movement permission is quite simple as you can see here we can see ccc means simply the that the person can move in that area one means the person cannot enter that area whereas two three and four and so on they give us the level of permission for example C, C is considered to be level 3 permission. So if we want to, let's assume right now a, a person will walk over this water. But we don't want the person to walk over this water. So what we can do is just use 4, which is the level 4 permission or for the surf, correspond to surf. And then just click here and replace all the C in this area with 4. Also, I can, I buy miss so now a person the person cannot walk in this area or all or in this pond also to see what happens let's just do one thing we can just replace the perm now you see here we have c c c c c permission for here as the person can or the player can walk behind the house we can also make this permission 3c what 3c will does it will allow the person to walk either below or above the tile right now the, the the player can walk only above the tile but this will allow the player to walk either below or above the tile this is very essential or nice permission for if you want to change the if you want to create a bridge or something like that as bridge has both bridge should con a bridge tile should contain both both permission ab above and below also we can do is let's quickly go and well we, we do have a bridge right now yes we do so let's quickly go to i don't know which route it is so i'll just go to mobile city click on connectors my bad it doesn't first i'm, I'm going just going to save it so, so the changes that are saved now let's click on mobile city 
now this gives now I am just going to go click on connector and then just now you see here for the bridge we have three C permission now here we are allowed to walk below the either below the bridge or above the bridge for the area that we have to solve we have four permission four as I already said C is a level three permission and and you can only go to a high level from a previous level that means you can only go to surf if you are already walking which is normal so here as you can see for the bridge we have in lot of areas the permission that we have is 3c what 3c does is is it restricts the permission that we can only go to go below that we can go below the, below the bridge and also above the bridge here permission 10 means that we can only access this or walk in this area with a bicycle without a bicycle it is not allowed and what is the magic of 3c is that if you enter it from a permission number 10 to 3c it will immediately make itself 10 that's the fun about 3c so now let's go back to our base map that was later root down so this this is all about permissions now let's move on to events tab now events as you can see contains a lot of information here we have various person stripes sprites which we can turn on and off also we have different words written here written here here s defines here s in green defines a script or something that will occur s with red defines a signpost w defines a warp and f defines a fly position now as you can see there is a script here okay a script we have a script here this is a script for the starter starter part we have warp script here okay and also a warp script here now if we click on this warp script it will show us we are going to go through all the script but first let's go to if we click on this warp, warp script it will show us something that firstly the type of script which is warp secondly it, the number the number is 2 now this is the warp number this is very important part as your warp number will define where your player will land once it enters a warp area now warp script can only be set through certain on certain tiles that allow the warp feature for example door, cave, mouse or something like that so here the warp script warp number is very important and you must remember if you want to change something now if for example if i want to do something like i i want to change this i want that when my player enters i what the fuck i just did okay i just went there my bad i just double click and it took me to the position where it if i want that when my player enters the professor's lab it goes into my rival's house and when it enters rival's house it goes to professor's lab this can happen also if i double click on this warp and save changes it will take me inside the lab as here is the warp number warp number two or warp number that where the previous warp will take us that is number zero as you have you have seen let me show you here it okay warp number zero next is next is the amount of event tab but before that let's go to the next event type which is a script now i'm not going to go in detail with a script as it is a bit complicated but it just defines something that will happen when you step on certain tiles okay next is this f which means flying position this event is where your person will land once it it flies to that area like for example if you fly if you place it here somewhere here it will he will land the player will land here when he uses fly to reach to little root town it's it's self-explanatory signpost is also self-explanatory it just defines this uh, that this is a signpost the and lastly we have the person event what person event does is if we click on this guy or something like this guy you see here we have person event number person event picture if we change this we change the sprite of the person that is there 
and then event number is just related to script as you need to know scripting movement type walk around here we also we have some option to play walk left look up down various option to play with run up right left and down something like that we can do this 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 tells the, the amount of movement that the player can that the person can do also if you check this bar it will give us that if it is a trainer or not if we click on this he will battle with us also i am just not going to check this right now also if you want to add a new personal person event we can add it too let's say i want right now i have eight and i just created a personal person event previously when i was checking whether this one is working or not so here you can see i created this guy which looks just like our player i'm just going to change the sprite just go to picture and change it okay you can see a lot of options are there i'm just going to go with the one that i think is better for okay that one was good and i liked him so this is the guy i'm just going to place him somewhere here hidden okay and then i'm going to go with it it says no movement i am just going to go with look around no movement just look around i'm going to give him trainer view radius this gives how many tiles he can see i want him to see again two tiles okay person id etc right now don't i have a, a, a in battle script on him so i think the game will crash when i go and interact with him but let's see what happens next is wild pokemon tab now this is also quite fun and easy to use you need to add some wild pokemons in your map as i added some grass so just go and create a new this for example if i go for a route this will show amount of wild pokemon that you have for a route as you can see you have a maximum amount of 12 pokemons that you can have on a route in grass in water since there are no pokemon on this route but you can have six in tree which can and in with fishing rod so now i've added grass in little root town so i can encounter pokemon there yep i can encounter pokemon there before getting a pokemon i'm going to break this game so badly now let's go and now if you want to create a new pokemon wild pokemon data just create on just click on create and then select uh, i have already added water i have added grass and i so we can do three things here i am not going to do anything with the tree part now here just do as he says click on ok just click on any button and repoint this is easy thing okay and here you can see we get a data flow a, a series where we can choose what what pokemon we can encounter and set the encounter date and also the level first let's choose a pokemon i want all the all the starters here so i'm going to give add trigo here so they ask Trico, I say level two Pokemon. You can also break if you say level zero. You need to be careful. I am going to say it's level two. I'm going to set this encounter date to let's say twenty percent. I want Charmander. Okay, again two. I'm not going to set all the Pokemon. There, it is going to be two much work i'm going to set a bulbasaur so you can choose from the top down menu as well set the level level i'm going to give each of them encounter it 20 percent that's something i encounter let's say encounter it 20 percent 20 percent 20 percent next is let's save it here i'm not going to go ahead now same also i can do is water in water i can add pokemons so i will not be encountering them right now this is during surfing and here i can add also add pokemon and also do the same for fishing where i can add 10 pokemons that you can catch depending on the on your rod now last tab that we need to go through is header tab this is quite simple and one of the most simple tab that you can see this contains the name of the name which can be anything you can the name that you want to be displayed as you walk from one area to another like i want it to be 
my town T. Show the name on entering. Show city name. Ah, so so this will do. And just click on change name. And it will change the name of my into bound my town T. Simple. Next next is the music. I can change the music. I want it to be like. Uh, let's say sky pillar music I like that music it will automatically change the music number with the, so I am I want the sky pillar music so I'll just go and click on sky pillar music cave regular here I can choose do I want to use a flash or not I'm just going to go and give it regular whether I can change I can change rain with thunderstorm it will be raining type type to village and fight random gym style team rocket style big red random let's say random next is map scripting which i will i am again going to avoid and this is one of the another thing that we can do which is change the dimension of the map if i play with this i can change the size of the map increasing its borders where i can change the type of border tile and etc but i'm not going to go through that you this is quite simple and self-explanatory and also i don't want to make this video very long so now we have made our changes, just, let's just save it in a row and now what is left to do is just try that the changes that we do, did they reflect it back in, the, in our room or not. So let's just go to our emulator that I've already got running here. Click on open room and then select the room that you want to run. I got it to start the game. As it is too much, I'm just going to reduce the volume. I'm just going to turn off the volume as it's too much, and you won't be able to hear me. The changes are here finally. If I go to one place, I go to another. You see, and I'm not going to go to the lab that is, that is going to do now. Since I didn't fix this person's script, he will be moving on the water. But I can fix him in, in the map where I define his movement a different or I move him somewhere else. You see I changed him to running endlessly and he will keep on running till the time I didn't stop. The climate is also changed. I switched off the music but let me switch it on to show you that how much is the, the music. <laughs> I will just go ahead and mute again as the music is too loud right now. Here we have the encounter in which we will encounter some Pokemon. You see I encountered Trico here. I as I said an encounter, but I will write out simply because I has no I have nothing left. And I have no Pokemon till now. And I'm just broken this game, I can't escape because I will encounter a Pokemon right now. Also Let's break the game. Okay, as I told you, since I haven't added any script, this will just crash the game. And it did. You see? As I moved ahead of him, he just crashed the game. I can't do anything else. So, with that, you can change uh, quite a bit of, uh, of any map. I just crashed. I just going to shut this out. This is so damn. So, with this, you can change, or uh, with this tool, you can change the entire map with just very easily and also make it look like that you are really and this just makes you makes ending the rom hacking quite easier this map you can use for if you want to advance focus on the you just need to learn the scripting and that's all so i think that would if you like if you like and enjoyed that video please like and subscribe i really need your subscribes as since right now i'm not getting anything of my own all the hard work and please subscribe guys it will also benefit you as you will get the notification of my latest video as soon as it comes out next time i'm going to cover another tool which is very important that being advanced map advanced text editor now i the first time i downloaded it it gave some errors so i will be going in this in the next video i will be going through how to download it correctly or how to fix the errors so that it can run this tool is very easy to use believe me and 
and it, it will take a very few very little time in order to understand and run it completely so with that hope you like the video define dark signing out I'm not